Do you remember uh, when that commercial, it was for like a, like a ragu or a prego or something, and there was a guy, and it was a mushroom and tomato sauce, and there was a guy who'd go, I love mushrooms. There is no such thing as too many mushrooms. I love mushrooms. Big mushrooms, little mushrooms. Mushrooms intensify the flavor of the sauce. I love to look at them, smell them, hold them, count them, put them in my sauce. Does it ring a bell for you? No. Well, there was, it was a commercial. Today on Dope in the Pantry, we are making uh, my new favorite way of making a rustic mushroom tomato sauce. I've got about a pound of mushrooms mixed with a pound of pasta and one can of tomatoes. A lot of shallots, a lot of garlic, very strong flavors in this one. So like rosemary, strong flavor, thyme, strong flavor, shallots, strong, garlic, mushrooms, tomatoes, pasta, maybe cheese if you want to. If you don't, it can be vegan, but if you do, Nice little pecorino is nice in there. You can use any mushrooms you want, but the point of this is I kind of want them to be in big chunks. So with shiitake, you want to take the uh, stem off. I, if you're lucky, you can just kind of get in there. And also, you don't even have to cut mushrooms. You can just rip them into cool sizes too. Do we have like a sound effect of like someone cheering? Like every time it goes like, yay! Shit. Shit. Sometimes that happens. I'm just gonna put some water in here and then we're gonna let them just kind of let some of the dirt come off them. So the cool thing about dirt is it's heavier than mushrooms. So the dirt will kind of naturally fall out. These ones, I kind of like the stemminess of them, but I want them to not be that big. So what I'll actually do on these, slice them into little like, kind of nice little long thin men that can kind of grab onto your fork in a cool way. I feel like if someone said they're like high in folate, I'd believe them and then be like, I wonder what folate is. Now, some people get really serious about like, and now they've absorbed water and you gotta dry them off and yada, yada, yada. I don't do that. It's water, it's gonna cook, it's gonna braise, I'm not worried about it. And then for these, nice kind of thick slices like this. Let's make a little sauce. So we got about probably like five shallots, three to four cloves of garlic, a few sprigs of thyme, a big fat sprig of rosemary, which I am gonna, once again, just do a little tie job, which just kind of makes it a little easier to fish out later. We got our pan on like a medium to medium high heat. Throw in some olive oil. Now we're gonna scoop up our shallots and garlic. We're just sweating these out. A little salt, a little pepper. Sometimes I add white wine to this. What do you think, Ben? Should I add white wine today? We have some in the fridge that's open. Then we definitely should. Just want this to kind of soften up and wilt. Add a little bit of uh, crushed red pepper. Throw a little bundle in there. You want those crushed red peppers to sort of toast and infuse with the oil a little bit. And now we can add our mushrooms. Looks like a lot of mushrooms, right? It is. Is that my new slogan? Does that look like a lot of mushrooms? Well, it is. And then we're gonna season again with some salt, a little more pepper. And we just wanna kind of get a little bit of a, just a little bit of the rawness out of these. But already look at like how fast that pan is dry now. Look at that. Mushrooms are just oil sponges and they're eventually gonna release that oil back out. So you don't wanna use too much. This is why a little bit of uh, white wine is nice because it gives a little bit of a action to it and you're gonna build up some of that little fond on the pan. And look, if you wanna make this extra good, a little butter is very nice. All right, this is still moving and grooving, but very dry. So it almost looks like I'm dry toasting at this point because I don't wanna keep adding oil to it. And that is why you could add a little bit of water if you wanted to, but I'm gonna use probably like a half cup or so. And now we can scrape up all that tasty goodness on the bottom. And now, look at that, these are getting nice and juiced up. That's enough for me to drink later. Put our tomatoes, use the same bowl, you know, why waste it? Here it comes. Now, you're gonna wanna uh, make sure you use a rubber spatula or a little water to slosh inside of this because here's the thing, folks, they charge you for the tomatoes on the inside of the can. Now, look at this guy bubbling nice. Look at that, it already looks pretty red, doesn't it? Add in our tomatoes. And now scraping up any other last bits from the bottom, just in case. A little more salt and pepper. We're just gonna drop this down to a low simmer. That's it, we're gonna leave it for 30 minutes. And then you're basically ready to go. 
Woo! Woo! Now we're just going to take this guy out. Water's boiling. Remember the goal here is you want it to be salted like a well-seasoned broth. A little box of the old fusilli. Cook this until uh, it is al dente. Al dente, of course, named after Albert Dente. Uh, and then scoop it, sloop it, dish it, and wish it. Nope. As always, if you don't have this handy little guy, uh, just drain it regular, but save a little scoop of pasta water in case you want it to help bring the sauce together. Starchy, salty, pasta watery goodness. Is this faster? No, but it's easier to uh, wash than a colander, I guess. I don't know. I like doing it. Leave me alone. Here's another t-shirt. I don't know. I like doing it. Leave me alone. If you weren't going to put cheese on it, you might want to do a little like fresh parsley or something at the end, just to give it a little something something. That's very hot and very good. A little salt. Now it's vegan. No longer vegan. Little Pecorino Romano. I like a little more olive oil on top of the cheese. It looks cool. Did you shoot that slow motion? I did not. Okay. This looks pretty good, right? It's a good thing this bowl's not hot. Mmm. We're shooting a few episodes every day while Ben's around. It was where we're kind of batch shooting. And um, so sometimes, like when I made this, I really did not want to eat it because I'm very full. We've been cooking all day. This is the last dish of the day. But then I start eating it and I go, oh, f this is really good. Doing a lot of things at once. It's like earthy, like the rosemary, the mushrooms, the thyme, with these kind of earthy notes. Then you get acid from the tomatoes and from the white wine. The shallots kind of round it all out. And then you get that little funk from the pecorino at the end. Mmm, 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 mmm. God damn, this is good. I love mushrooms. Mm.